there was a point in my life where I had to start moving my body in order to access that still place within me. Like I'm walking deeper into my soul. So it's not really that I'm walking in a circle, although I am. Felt like I was spiraling deeper into myself. And I made the choice to awaken and be fully present to whatever this voice had to tell me. Instead of forcing ourselves into situations that may not be the situation that's meant for us, we can get quiet and allow ourselves to align. A lot of this path is helping you connect to an inner child. I would think that took a willingness to just pause and say, okay, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to do it. And what happens when you take things seriously, you tell the universe that you're serious. Thankfully, I am here today with Elaine Glass, who is the author of this fantastic book called Get Quiet. It is seven steps. I'm going to let her walk you through these amazing, well, at least one of these amazing seven steps to paths to truths of who you are. Now, Elaine, I got to know you before I knew you were an author, which was such a treat. But then I heard you were releasing a book and I was like, okay, now I need to know about the book and I need to know more about just what inspired you to write it. And when I found out it was around labyrinths, I was even more intrigued. So are you willing to share with the community what what led you to a labyrinth, literally and figuratively, I guess, both? Because a labyrinth isn't just something outside. It can really become something inside. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm just honored to be here with you today. My life was so loud. It was really crashing down. My health was um, deteriorating. My marriage was at the brink of ending. And I thought to myself, how could this be happening to me? I think we all ask ourselves, like, how could this be happening to me? I, I'm, I'm, I'm an educated woman. I have a career. I have a beautiful family. I think I'm right, making the right choices for myself. Um, but I really wasn't. I was actually betraying myself and betraying my values. And so I became um, a single mother almost overnight. Um, and I had to get healthy as quickly as I possibly could for my kids. And so my inspiration were my boys to get healthy mind, body, and soul so that they had the healthiest mother to raise them. And I thought someone was going to come and knock on my door and save me, but nobody came. And so I had to save myself. One day, I was in a hurry, going to the pickup line, picking up my kids from school, rushing, trying to get them a snack, get myself a snack. And I ended up at a coffee shop right before I went to pick them up. And there was a guy there. And something in me just said, stop and talk to him. And it was so clear. And I just immediately stopped. And we started to talk while we waited for our snacks and coffee. And he was telling me about his need to heal from addiction recovery and that there was this place called the Franciscan Renewal Center that he would go to to find peace and quiet. And I thought, oh, that sounds wonderful. I need some of that. <laughs> so picked up my kids, and later that evening, I went to this place that ended up only being a half a mile from my house. And I had driven by that place for 20 years and never stopped in because it wasn't my religious faith. Yeah. 
And that was a, a limiting belief for me. And so I had to overcome the fact that maybe there is something in that place for me. And that was my first hurdle. And, um, and I'm so glad that I pushed through that because that's where I found this magical place of peace and quiet where I could actually tune in and hear my voice, my, what I call my soul's voice, the voice that we are born with, the voice that is the infinite voice that is always with us and always wanting for us to be able to hear it. And I wrote this book, Get Quiet, to help people be able to hear the voice. That's wonderful. And when this gentleman, I mean, here you are a single lady, you're in a coffee shop and a gentleman is like, hey, do you want to sit down and just chat? From what I read, it was like, there was just this inner knowing. You say your first hurdle was that the labyrinth was located at a place that had a different faith. But as I read the book, I was like, maybe it was also just slowing down and sitting with a gentleman that you didn't know in the midst of all this chaos that you had going on as well. I mean, you listen to your soul to even be willing to do that, which from observation, I would think that took a willingness to just pause and say, okay, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to do it. As a busy mom, when my son, I only had one, you had two. And you took that time to sit and listen. And to me, that speaks volumes about what a pull this had for you. Like that labyrinth was something about that was calling you and saying, it's time. So have you talked to that gentleman since then? I have not. <clears throat> I have not. Excuse me. I have not talked to him. I really believe that there are people that come into our lives that are angels. Uh, and I don't know if uh, sometimes you feel like you're being carried in a way that you can't even explain. But I really had no business even being at that coffee shop that day because I never would have stopped. It's just not something I would have done. Yeah. And no less stop and talk with him. And then no less go into this um, place that was not my religious faith. And so I believe that we are carried to places that we can't explain how we got there sometimes. And this was one of those times for me. That's so beautiful. So I went and started to walk this labyrinth. And I had heard of labyrinths, but I didn't know anything about them. It ends up they are these 4,000-year-old ancient pathways that traverse back and forth, and you can walk them. They're not a maze, so they're not there to confuse you, mm -hmm. but they're one way in and one way out. And it's sort of a metaphor from going from the outside world to the inner world, to your inner world. And um, so I started walking this labyrinth that one day. And I was so desperate to hear something that would be comforting, something that I knew I could rely on in terms of information that would guide me. Because at that point, I was mom and dad. And I was, I was making very masculine decisions, being the mom and dad, feeling very much in my masculine. And I felt like every day I was pulled away from really the truth of who I am by having to have those two hats on. <clears throat> and so I started walking the labyrinth that one day, and I felt in my soul a playfulness that I hadn't been able to access 
in years because of the worry and the fear of my future and my kids' futures. And there was a lightness and a playfulness. And the minute I started walking, it was almost like, uh, I know this sounds kind of weird, but like, it was like something took both of my hands and led me into these pathways in, in a playful way, in a childlike way, as if to say, you are safe. Life is not that serious. And let's lighten you up a little bit so that you have the wherewithal to clear your mind of all the things that are causing so much fear. And let's lighten you up and see what happens then. And the very first message I heard is if somebody was standing right next to me and nobody was there, the very first message I heard was surrender. And I thought to myself, surrender? How, how am I going to be able to surrender right now? I'm, I'm holding everything. I have to hold everything. If I let go of anything, my whole life's going to fall apart. But I took that message seriously. And what happens when you take things seriously, you tell the universe that you're serious. And they will... They, the universe, the energy of the universe, will respond in like. Well, they responded in like so quickly that it ended up looking that like me going back to my car that very first day. I turned on the radio of my car and I heard the announcer talking about one thing, and the message was all around the topic of surrender. Oh, wow. And that's where my quest for inner peace, health, happiness, joy, spiritual freedom started. That's incredible. It's always nice when you get that kind of validation too, right? So to have that there and then come back into the car is like, thank you, universe. I got the memo, but it's always nice to have it reinforced. <laughs> so thank you. So what was the first step you took when you were like, okay, I got the memo. I'm on this quest. Now, out of the gate, my first step is going to be what? To go back. And I couldn't go back for a month after because, to be honest, I was afraid. I was scared to hear what else this voice had to tell me because I knew that there was a change about to happen and I needed to be ready for it if we're ever that ready. But I knew that it was playful, a, a playful place, a loving place, a supportive place. Um, but it still took me a month to go back. So the very first thing I did was I went back and I made the choice to awaken and be fully present to whatever this voice had to tell me. Because the noise of the world wasn't telling me things that were bringing me to places that were healthy or good for me. So it was... It was me, and I knew it was going to only be me that would guide me. And we always hear the answers are all within us. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to trust that. But I didn't know where that place was. And if the answers were there, what questions did I have to ask to get those answers? So that, that was the quest that I was on. And I, the very first thing was just going back again and again, walking in the desert in circles, rain or shine, full moon, no moon, on this quest to be able to be the healthiest mom I could be. Such a beautiful journey, really, because many would think, well, that had to be so boring. 
right? <laughs> Just walking in circles in the desert, like what is that going to do for you? But then that goes back to your title, right? Get quiet. So how did that walking the labyrinth, because when you walk a labyrinth, I have found personally that, yes, you're walking in circles, but you're really kind of not, or at least to me, it didn't feel, it felt more like you mentioned, like I'm walking deeper into my soul. So it's not really that I'm walking in a circle, although I am, felt like I was spiraling deeper into myself. And so as you explain it throughout the book, it's like levels and levels. So how do you navigate as you went back each time and go deeper into those levels? And when you talk about like your seven simple paths, how did you find the pathway that you found that fit for you? Well, I love your description of what this is. Uh, this is a walking meditation. It's a movement practice. So many times we are told to sit and be still in silence and in a dark room. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and and I've done that. I've I've been a transcendental meditation uh, meditator for over thirty years. I've done that, and it's been tremendously helpful. And at the same time, there was a point in my life where I had to start moving my body in order to um, access that, that still place within me. There's a movement that needs to happen. And this is what walking the labyrinth will do. It's a moving meditation. And so the very first path was very clear to me. It was all about getting moving and getting your body moving and nurturing your body. And each path that I embarked on, I went deep into that path. Sometimes I would take just a, like a year alone, just on one path. Nurturing my body was literally for at, at least a year or two. And it was all the ways that I had neglected my body. It was the, um, the becoming aware of how my body even works. So that looked like doing gentle movements at the beginning, like swimming in a swimming pool, doing yoga and Pilates. And then I got curious as to why my thyroid had problems and all the medications I had been prescribed. And so I went deep and dove into the diet around supporting my thyroid, the the diet and lifestyle supporting hormone function, um, getting my DNA and genetics tested to see how my body works. Um, it, it was just this rabbit hole I went down because I was so fascinated around nurturing my body in a way that I knew myself um, like I had never known myself before. And being able to tune into my body to say, do I need this medication today or not? In fact, I had gone so deep down this rabbit hole of nurturing my body that one day I had gotten to the labyrinth and I literally heard as clear as day, don't take your medicine. And I said, well, uh, to myself, I have to take my medicine. This, I mean, I've been told by my doctor to take my medicine. You're prescribed, yeah, what are you gonna do? I felt so good that day, all day, and I didn't know why, because I didn't take my medicine. The next day, I didn't take my medicine, and I thought, well, this I don't know if this is going to work out for me, but all of a sudden, I felt so clear-minded. I felt like re-energized, and I wasn't so in this like mental depression that I'd had, that I'd been in like for 10 years prior. So I called my doctor, and I said, this is what's happening. And she said, well, let's see if a compounded version would be healthier for you. It ended up that a lot of our pharmaceuticals have a lot of binders and fillers and dyes in them. And my body was sensitive to all that. And again, it was just, I got quiet 
I listened to that voice that said, don't take your medicine. And my whole body got healthier overnight. And uh, that's what made me want to continue walking that labyrinth because it was guiding me in right, the right places almost um, almost like if I didn't trust this voice, I would be absolutely lost. Because I came to that labyrinth feeling completely lost. So I was gradually waking up and being almost found in a way. And it was really exciting. So the first path is about nurturing your body and being able to tune in to these subtle sensations and not to look away when something is out of whack. How many times have we all looked away from something in our bodies that, um, that scare us? Yes. Or as you said, the doctor prescribed the medicine, so you feel, well, if the professional prescribed it, then I should follow that. But there was another solution because the doctor didn't know that there was a response. So when you came back and said, this is what's happening, you had an alternative. So that open communication, so key. That's right. And in the busyness of my fear-based world before tuning into this voice, I would never have heard that. Not in a million years. Right. So... After nurturing my body, the second path was about cleaning and clearing my environment. And when you've got small kids in the house and toys everywhere and maybe clutter that you haven't looked at in years, or for me it was a storage unit outside my home that I was paying for every month, but the key, I didn't even know where the key was. So it was then about cleaning and clearing my environment. And this was a, a path that I really didn't see coming in, in terms of what it did as a result for me. And as you know in Get Quiet, this is a path about opening your heart energy, uh -huh. which I know you are so passionate about. Yes. When things are weighing heavy around us that are tangible, uh, it's hard to breathe. It's hard to even feel this heart that we have pounding inside of us with an energy that directly is pounding and, and vibrating with the universe and God. And when you're missing out on that one aspect of your life, you will definitely feel like something is missing. So I clean and cleared my house. I threw away things. I went through old boxes. And it was very cathartic when you do that because you're opening up love letters from the past or seeing pictures of grandparents and you're remembering who you were, mm -hmm. mainly as a child. You know, a lot of this path is helping you connect to an inner child, a playfulness that we have forgotten about because life gets heavy and we are, we're, we're dealing with loss in a lot of ways. We're disappointments that we haven't, you know, been able to um, heal. And so life just gets so heavy that we forget to play and we forget who we were when we were a child. And for me, I was a, a child that I was a gymnast and, I was um, in nature all the time, and uh, I loved uh, being curious, and my imagination would flow, and, and I know that we are all that. We've just forgotten it, and we need to remember. And so a lot of the paths in Get Quiet help you remember this truth about who you are that you are just a, a playful um, you know, child of God. And when we remember that and stay focused on that, our life becomes so much easier and we 
we are directed to opportunities and people that um, are meant for us in this lifetime. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. Instead of forcing ourselves into situations that may not be the situation that's meant for us, we can get quiet and allow ourselves to align to what is truly meant for us, which feels so much better. It really does, because then it fits. It totally fits. The third path took me uh, to a place, and in the labyrinth, you'll notice that um, it's the outer ring of the labyrinth, so it's the longest path. And to me, it was the most difficult, which made sense that it was literally the longest path. <laughs> And I found myself saying, well, this is the path of the mind. And the energy point is the head. And this was where the monkey mind was needing to quiet down. <laughs> but it was hard. It's really hard. And so I realized that I wasn't present in my life. And that I was missing moment after moment after moment of my life because when you're not present all these moments add up and all of a sudden a whole life can go by so this was where i started doing a lot of hypnotherapy i was doing um taking a lot of courses reading a lot of books around mindset and how to shift my perspective on things how to heal um, old patterning and old stories that weren't true anymore for me, that were actually limiting me and holding me back. So the path of the mind, this is a hard one. And when you can get through this, I think I might have, I definitely was on this for at least two years, the path of the mind. But the good news is, because of Get Quiet, you don't have to be there for two years. So that's why I wrote the book, so that no one had to, no one has to take a decade to, to know this. What a gift. And ultimately, as you're reflecting, everyone's path will be different, which is like saying everyone who walks through the labyrinth, that experience is different. It's not the same for any one person. But just like the labyrinth, these are tools, just like the, you know, that's what a labyrinth is. You don't have a labyrinth as you reflect. Like, it's not about the labyrinth. It's about getting quiet. That's what helps you and what you bring forward, which I think is so beautiful. Find what can help you get to that point. And this labyrinth helps you do that. Yeah, so many, so many times I had come up with um, you know, people that would could help me, coaches, and they were all very well meaning. But um, it's you know when I I didn't like when someone told me exactly how to do something. Uh, it never it never felt good. I wanted to know for myself. So this is a roadmap. Get quiet is a roadmap to some for someone to say, well, if like for instance, a client of mine who would. Um, uh, who just had bought a new pair of tennis shoes. Anyone wanting to just suddenly take a yoga class or Pilates class or start taking a walk outside, there's something energetically that's moving you, that's calling you to start shifting this energy inside of you. And this is, this is what I mean by you tuning in and knowing what you need, not by me telling you what you need, but by reading Get Quiet and seeing those seven paths, there's going to be one if not two, that are really going to speak to you. And so you go back and you, you go dive a little bit deeper in those paths in your own life. But I know that when someone goes and buys a pair of tennis shoes and starts wanting to move their body, I know what path they're on. And this is so such an intuitive way to move our lives forward and to heal. This is how I was able to heal, is this intuitive process uh, so the, the after the mind, getting the mind settled and getting really present to my life, 
those first three paths took a lot out of me. And so the next path was for me to rest. How often do we ever give ourselves permission to do that? Well, I want to give you permission to do that because you deserve to rest. And what I found was a lot of um, stuck emotions during this path. And the energy point, because every path is associated with an energy point in the body to shift energy, the energy point on this path were the hips. And I could actually see just in that little ilium, in both of our hips called the ilium, that little socket where there was so much stuck, dense energy. And what I realized was, oh my gosh, you hear that, well, you carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. In this case, what was very clear to me walking this path is that we carry the weight of the world on our hips. And that's why we have so many back problems, leg problems. Um, and literally, I could see this dark, dense, stuck energy in each hip. I know that sounds a little out there, but we are energy. It's that's not all out there we to are. Me. <laughs> Yeah, and probably not most of our community. So, and I love that because you can shift your energy and your state of being by just following these paths and doing your own energy work on yourself. I'm just guiding you to the points of where to focus your attention on those energy points. You use you use your playful, childlike imagination to do the rest to shift that energy there. And it makes so much sense because our root chakra for connecting to the world, weight of the world, would be down by the root chakra. So that makes so much sense. And then it blocks creativity, really, which is the next chakra up. So when you think about why would it be up here by your heart, which is so, so open. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. So we've gone from... The, the first path, which is nurturing the body, which that energy point was the abdomen, if I didn't mention that. But then we went up to the, to the cleaning and curing, clearing your environment, which was the heart. And then the next was the, the mind, that was the head energy. Then we went down to the, the hips, and that was the rest and receiving. And then the next path that I was on was I felt, after I rested, I felt very grounded in a way that wasn't just this normal feeling settled in a way that you would normally feel after you've gone through a time in your life where you kind of felt like you had figured a lot of stuff out. Mm -hmm. It was such a deeper sense of being in a state of being that would allow me to um, begin to know where my life was actually taking me. So it was very profound. And what I noticed was that the energy here was the feet, and there were these beautiful rays of light that I saw shining down into the earth. But also, what I didn't see coming was that grounding for me, and what I write about in the book, is more than just down to the earth. It's actually up to the heavens as well, into God consciousness, unity consciousness. So there's this upward grounding and downward grounding, and your whole body is just surging with this loving energy from head to toe infused in every cell of your body. And this was a profound path for me. And it made me literally be able to feel like I was, like, uh, had a superpower. It made me feel empowered, finally, because I'd lost my power. For so long, I'd lost my power. So the next path after that, that I realized was with this energy, with this enthusiasm, 
with this health, mind and body, I was healthy again enough to be able to dream again for myself. I had lost my dreams. I was helping everybody else with their dreams. How many times have you been helping everybody, your partner, people at work, your kids, your friends? You are the one nurturing everybody and helping everybody live out their dreams. This was the path that I knew I had to bring all of that wisdom and nurturing and love inward for myself. And that felt very foreign to me, which I think it does for a lot of people, especially women. Especially, I was going to say, and it feels so wrong, like naughty almost, like, oh, I should be doing that. We get that so often from individuals. I want to, but, but I shouldn't. It feels wrong because we've been taught that it's wrong. You should do it for everyone else, not for yourself. If you do it for yourself, you're self-centered. You're egotistical. You're narcissistic. So how do you move through that in this path? There comes a point where you become unwilling to live like you lived before. It's like I personally crossed a bridge and the bridge just collapsed behind me and I was unwilling and literally couldn't go back to the life I'd lived before, which was everything that you just described, that it's not okay for, for especially a mother to spend any time on herself, that all of your energy must go to your children. But it's as simple as, you know, when you're on an airplane and they say, put your face mask on first and then put your children's face mask on. It's just as simple as that. You need to give yourself oxygen to breathe again. We forget that we need to breathe in this world that's so loud and so noisy. This is where I was able to breathe and to tune in and be able to imagine that my life mattered. And if I was, if my kids were going to be their best, then they needed to see me at my best. Kids are great imitators, but they need something great to imitate. And I made a decision that my dreams were going to be so big because I wanted them to dream big too. Good for you. And that's it. If we don't have any gas in the tank, how can we do anything for anyone? Nope. It's not possible. So this was the path where I really began to, again, it seems a little weird, a little woo-woo, um, and I'm not woo-woo. It's just like literally going to this labyrinth. Oh, girl, bring woo-woo. <laughs> and I, I heard these clear messages. Um, Elaine, you can facilitate healing, and you will be doing that. You will be, you know, writing and writing books. You will do that. And I was like, what? Like me? Little old me? I'm just, I'm, I'm a single mom trying to get through my life. What am I hearing? And can I trust that? But at that point, I had been on this path for at least five years. And I said, okay, I'm ready. And you know, it's so funny because synchronicities, I believe, are the soul just coming in and saying, you're, you're right on the right path. When I said I was ready one day in the labyrinth and I declared that to the universe, you know, you have to be careful with what you wish for. That next Saturday, I was driving my oldest son to a baseball game and 
my guides and angels literally caught my attention because there was an old time car. It was seven o'clock in the morning at a stop sign. And this old time car was right in front of me. And guess what the license plate said? I'm ready. That's wonderful. So, you know, you, you make a pact. Uh, there are these um, truths in the universe, like, um, like being truthful and not lying. So I could not lie to myself or God, and I took this seriously. I said I was ready, and I meant it. And when I said I was ready, that's when every there was a lot of momentum after that. It's amazing. And you mentioned your sons. How do they how do they feel about all of these transitions in your life? Because it's one thing when we go through this, having navigated a path somewhat like yours. It's one thing when we navigate it and our whole lives start to change. But then when our the people that are around us, our family, our friends start to see these these changes in us. How did your direct family start to perceive this? What did they think? What did they say? What did they do as you went through it? Well, my kids could feel it in the home because it was a safe place. Mom was happy. Mom had flowers, fresh flowers, and was cooking, and uh, we had pets, and we had adventures, and, and I wasn't just stuck in my room crying myself to sleep every night, which was the case after, right after, after the divorce. This literally helped me heal so that they could have a mom that was alive, alert, and aglow again. This saved me, and it saved my children. And this is why I take this work so seriously. Because if I had all the money in the world, I would help single mothers. There are over 300 million single mothers around the, world, around the world. Imagine how many kids that translates into. And if they just had the financial means, the tools, even in this book, to help them, to help their families, the world would be a different place. So that is my mission, is to help single mothers around the globe get healthy so that they can be their best for their children. That's incredible and very near and dear to our hearts and some of the things that we have in motion. So it'd be wonderful to chat with you as you continue on that flow, see if there's a way we can align in any capacity. Um, but it's also amazing to see how it can impact the children because when the children feel that sense of safety and observe that happiness, as you say, they're wonderful imitators. And that's at any age. It's not just when they're little, when they're teenagers or even when they're grown adults, they still look to parents to find guidance at the age that they are. And so when they can see that you're glowing, that you're happy, and they say, I want to be that, and they're going to seek to understand, how did you get that? And then that is what they will desire to emulate. So to have the strength to navigate through a decade's worth of transformation, to be that not just for your kids, but then to put it down in a book so that others can say, I want to be that, and then have the opportunity to do that. That's a gift. 
So thank you. Yeah, my book is dedicated to my boys. Uh, they're grown. They're, they're not boys. They're men now. But we did it together. We did it together. They were my inspiration. I'm their inspiration. And we did it together. And uh, they're so proud of me. In fact, when the book came out, we went to the bookstore and, you know, we, we celebrated. We celebrated. Because it was a sign that we had gone through the storm and were able to come out the other end happy, healthy, and whole again. And if that doesn't inspire you to, to, to get any tool you possibly can, whether it's Get Quiet My Book or anything else that speaks to you, the work that you do, Amber, here, this is all helping the world get healthier and change the planet. So uh, it's you are an inspiration to me. And um, thank you so much for everything that you do too. Oh, my goodness. I think that's why many of us are here right now. I believe that too. In all truth. Yes. It is time to get quiet and get healthy, right? I believe so. Now is the time. We have so much at our fingertips that can guide us and also know that you are able to guide yourself. You are able to lead yourself. You don't have to rely on the outside world. That's why Get Quiet is a roadmap. It will not tell you exactly what to do, but it will point you in the direction. And all you need to do is just go to the next step. And I know that it will guide you exactly where you need to go and experience what you need to experience in this lifetime. Yes. So I don't know if the camera can see it very well. But I'm going to hold it up because I love these little pages mm -hmm. that have just like the one little saying. So even if you're in a rush and you just want to read one little thing, it's so helpful to have that. So to be able to flip open and go, oh, yeah, let me just have this one little glance and sorry, I did dog ear your pages because there were certain sections where, so if you see that, it's an honor and respect to dog ear a page where Absolutely. I come from. <laughs> must dog ear, must dog ear. Uh, and in the Audible, uh, for those who are interested in listening, I, I read the book in the Audible. And what they've done in the uh, Audible is that each chapter, as you know, since you've read the book, um, takes you through a visualization through that exact energy point. Mm -hmm. And they've put it to music and the background is just so beautiful. So the audio book is, is really a beautiful experience as well. If, if, um, if you want to listen and not, and not read it. That's, that's lovely. Now, for those who do want to get it, can you let individuals know where they can purchase your book, how they can get the audio book, obviously audible, but where all is this available? Yes. Well, they can get the book anywhere they buy their books, or they can go to the, the website for the book, which is simply getquiet.com. Getquiet.com. And they can find me at elaineglass.com. So very, uh, very simple uh, places for them to, to go to. Perfect. And it's glass, like a window pane of glass, G-L-A-S-S. -S. Yes, yes. Okay. Or mm -hmm. a good drink of something in your glass. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll make sure all of that's available wherever they're listening to this too. So whenever, if they're driving, if you're driving, you can just, once you're done, find where you've hit this and all the links will be below. So make it really quick and easy to get to it. As we're wrapping up, if someone's on this journey, they've just gone through something like what you went through. I know you explain in the beginning, like you weren't just going through, you know, your marriage and where it was and your own personal internal. You were also navigating, not being sure where your career was. So your whole life 
was kind of in a crux at the time. So many people right now kind of are facing similar places in their journey. So if they are there and they don't have access to a labyrinth, what would you say to them? What is one piece of advice that you would say for them to tune into that inner intuition and know, just have that inner knowing? You are not alone. You have God inside of you everywhere to support you. You have this loving spirit team that is always with you and always has been with you, always will be with you. Get quiet. Connect to that. Because that is what is going to help you the most, in my opinion. Beautiful advice. Thank you for coming and sharing so that we could understand your journey, what it is meant for you, and more about Get Quiet since it just released. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a pleasure. Always. 